Hey guys, this will be video three for the how to design build a custom flying V. And uh, I had no intentions of doing a video tonight, but uh, here I am. So, and I, the reason I did decide to do the video is because I got to thinking about um, whomever may be uh, um, considering buying this guitar or, you know, bidding on it in a week or two when I get ready to list it. Uh, I would, I, I'm the type guy, I'd kind of want to see how it went, came together. Uh, most people don't care about that, but for that one person out there that does care, well, then this video will be for you. And uh, what happens at, at this stage, or what has happened over the last uh, 12 to 14 hours, or since last night, the last video, uh, you you start having to work um you're, you're moving into more of the finished state, or at least anticipating the finished items. So even though you're doing this, uh, you know, pretty heavy duty machine work and you're working with, you know, all the power tools, you got to be really delicate and you got to really think about, you know, the job as it's coming together. Uh, A, so that you don't have to repair mistakes. Uh, B, so that you uh, train yourself to be a good guitar builder. And you and the whole idea of, of learning to build guitars is, uh, to the best of your ability, uh, follow you know a format by which it comes together so that you don't have to repeat things. Like, for instance, you don't see the binding on here because I'm going to do something different this time. The last guitar, I went ahead and I had it at this point and I threw the router up on there and routed that binding channel. It was a breeze, took about 10 minutes. Then within two to three hours, I had all the binding on it. Well, and, and the thing about the binding, uh, it was pretty much perfectly flush with the body. But then after that, I ended up having to protect that binding as I did all the other work, meaning like the, the painting. Had to tape it off, had to always be cognizant of, of a you know a soldering gun on the table or just any tool any sharp tool anything that could create damage and cause you to have to make a repair so i got the thing i thought i'm gonna try this differently i'm gonna go ahead and do the sparkle top but i'm gonna finish the painting on the body pretty much 99 percent if not 100 percent and then i'm gonna have that baby just perfectly level and true and a finished guitar with a sparkle top no binding on it yet and then i'm going to ever so del delicately uh, do one pass with a router and cut the binding channel and then i'll tape off the black or the white whatever the body color is i'll tape it off right at the edge and then i'll put the binding on with the con with the binding cement and I'll cover this stuff in the future because it's really interesting uh, the, the, to do. It's, it's not difficult, but it's just kind of an art form. But um, if you, you know, again, there's just several different ways to, to make it to the finish line. But I'm going to try that. But I do know for a fact if you just painted it with the nitrocellulose lacquer and then you came in with the binding glue and the binding and you put the binding on forget it that binding glue is going to melt the nitrocellulose lacquer it's going to melt it and you'll you'll be cleaning and wiping off and all of a sudden it'll just the nitro will come off all the way down to this raw material so i'll have to protect it but i think after, after it's all said and done uh it'll be interesting to see how well it comes together and then i'll even have tape up here on the top Meaning, you know, I'll come in with my masking tape up here on the top, wherever the binding channel ended, um, then I'll, I'll have the top protected as well so that the binding glue doesn't get up on the top. Now, I'm pretty good at doing binding. I can I can tape this guitar off just with three quarter inch tape all the way around, and I guarantee you I'm not going to get binding glue on here. If you've never done binding, uh, I'd recommend papering this top off with some fairly thick paper and protecting it 100% because the whole idea about this Delmar drum wrap is the color that you see, the gold 
or if it were red or purple or black or whatever, um, that that is a gel coat sprayed onto this material, you know, when it's in sheet form. And if, you, if you're not careful, you can wipe this one or two times with um, uh, a little bit of a, 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 a cloth saturated with a little bit of lacquer thinner, but don't think that you're going to do that five or six times. You'll, you'll wipe the color off and you'll realize that, that that aluminum sparkle that's under there is just that. It's aluminum. It'll be silver and you will have lost your gold and uh, or your red or your purple or your pink or whatever it is you're building. So protect it with the tape. And same thing down here, just imagine that's a nice, beautiful, finished, uh, painted body. And then, you know, go ahead and do your routing for your binding channel, fit everything in, and then come in and tape right up to that edge. And then once you do your binding, then uh, you might want, you probably, just to be safe, I would really recommend going ahead and papering off the back, even if you're good, because if a little bit of glue got on the table and then the uh, guitar got pushed over into it, uh, then, you know, it'll, you know, it'll, you'll, you'll be repairing it. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it would be awesome if there's some way that we can figure out how to build these guitars by hand with as few mistakes as possible. And I think that's the objective to uh, it, uh, making it enjoyable doing this as well, so that you're not having to just, you know, continually do things over and repair. And also, uh, you, if you if you get into a job where you're in over your head and you end up just making mistake after mistake after mistake, uh, it, gets, it gets miserable really fast. And for the most part, what happens is the damn thing gets tabled. You throw it in the corner and you, you kind of throw it in the towel. Or you get, even though you were excited about it, you get so sick of it because of the memories that you had, <laughs> you know, where it, where it basically kicked you. You know what? Uh, if you get to that point, box it up, go get your uh, pilot's license. Spend about six months away from the thing and then come back when you're in a good place and then finish the guitar. So let me check the time. Seven minutes of, I don't know what that was, uh, binding rambling. Um, Anyway, let's do a little bit of a flyby and talk about the guitar, and then uh, we'll do some weight analysis, and we're going to do some mock-ups, and, and basically, in case I forget, you're working around doing the, the fitment of items that are mechanical but have to function, but then, as I mentioned, you, you want them to, to, to finish out at the appropriate height the first time. You don't want to just come in here and route this platform and having not engineered where you want it to finish up, okay? Now, and I've already covered this, but I'm gonna cover it again because this video is for whomever might be buying this guitar, but it's also for you guys out there that uh, have never thought about, huh, I didn't know you could take drum wrap and build a guitar out of it. You know, well, you know, check out Buck Owens. I think it was back in the 50s. When Buck Owens, and Steve knows about this, we've chatted back and forth about this. Um, in America, there was a show called Hee Haw, H-E-E-H-A-W. <laughs> and it was a, was a great show. I just loved it because of, the, of the, the country girls that they had where the fence would hit them in the butt and they would jump. <laughs> so that was the main reason I watched Hee Haw. Otherwise, otherwise, I was into Lawrence Welk because I was into big band and jazz and all that stuff. But nonetheless, Buck Owens shows up on Hee Haw with this silver sparkle uh, Telecaster. Now, Gretsch Guitars was the Gretsch Drum Company, which started building guitars. They kind of had the uh, they had the, the the control over all the sparkle top guitars. But I thought it sure was cool how somewhere in there, uh, Fender was able to build a Telecaster for Buck Owens and or someone built it custom out of sparkle. So you're working with this finished material, but you're also doing machine work where you're trying to make it all come together. I'm not telling you guys anything that you don't know, but I'm just trying to help you think about or help you to think about what would be the order of operations of building this whole guitar. Could I have just gone ahead and painted this body perfectly black or perfectly white before I even put the sparkle on it? Absolutely. Of course. You could have you could have just had not done any of the machine work, zilch, 
but made the body really beautiful and perfect. Painted that baby, and then uh, then come in and put the drum wrap down, uh, and then do all your routing and machine work, and then uh, that would be a very efficient way to build this guitar. And then do your binding, you know, with the tape over the paint, tape over the Delmar, and you're all covered. So speaking uh, speaking of Delmar. I'm going to transition into a correction from the last video. I made a statement. Yeah, it's, it's a 3M product, and it's, you know, as long as you read the instructions, it's not that difficult to do. I was talking about the contact adhesive. I was not talking about the drum wrap. So let me make certain that I cl cl clear that up. This is called Delmar Drum Wrap. And that's got a bit of a, a dent in it from the back. But once that, uh, if, if that's showing up, if, every time you see me um, with my thumb, I, it just bothers me because I haven't finished it yet. But once I shoot the clear nitro lacquer over, it'll level out and it'll be perfect. It'll be beautiful. But if I came in here and started scraping and sanding and scraping and sanding, I probably would le lose the gold or the amber gold color. So back to what is this or what this is. It's a Delmar drum wrap that Gretsch Guitars primarily was the ones that was really, uh, they were the ones using the, uh, I think the red, the silver, the gold. Uh, they might have been using the champagne in the 50s. I think they used the champagne paint in the 60s, and I think maybe black. But then you had a Pearl and Ludwig and all those drum companies that had different drum wraps. So I'm not... I'm not, I don't, I'm not a drum guy. I don't know a lot about that, but I just know that for the most part, uh, most people look at that and go, oh man, that's Gretsch, you know, and even Gretsch did a, a, a penguin, not a penguin, a, uh, it was like a, oh, a dual jet. It was a, gr a gold red, and then I think they did a green dual jet back in the 90s, and I actually owned one of those, a, a mid-90s uh, Gretsch dual jet with the gold sparkle, identical to this. So almost digress there, but uh, it's it's really cool. You can just put this stuff down with either a brush, or you can push it down with put it down with a foam roller. And as long as you seal the edge of the wood, it's a one coat application. But if this wood were raw, you probably would need to do two coats. And I'm not going to start talking about how do you do that at all because I've already covered that in the past. How to build a flying V. For Steve McDonald templates. I cover that in extensive detail. There are about two videos there where I install that stuff. So if you want to learn how to do that, uh, go to that video series from a, a couple months back and I show you exactly uh, what what where your head needs to be when you're when you're doing that. So so it's a Delmar drum wrap and it's put down with uh, either a 3M contact adhesive or in this case I used a DAP contact cement which is called Weldwood. And then you uh, you want to uh, I don't know whether real yeah you, this is pretty important. I may have covered this in the past video, but this is a, a very a, an instrumental tool if you want to get a really really phenomenal job. After you do it, drop, lay it on the floor, put up some carpet under it, and just get over hover over it and put all your body weight into this and just really roll it out. And then that'll guarantee that you get a perfect finish. It's called a J Roller, uh, number 1200B. I think I paid 45 or 65 dollars for this about 30 years ago. Okay, I've made a lot of money with that. So whatever they cost today, they're worth it. Okay, so build your guitar, uh, build a Buck Owens telly if you want. Do some do some, do some, do some drum wrap. You can buy this stuff off of eBay in smaller sheets even, and it's not very expensive. Uh, tap tone. I'm just going to read off my list here. After I did the uh, drum wrap, it was pretty cool. Uh, earbuds out or volume down. Three, two, one. Uh, after I did the Delmar, uh, it actually felt like the the tap tone got really uniform. It's almost like the Delmar brought it together. Just a beautiful tap tone. I mean, I'm just, I'm so excited about that. 
and this this will really give an idea when you just put the guitar off. The table is bouncing there a little bit, but it's just man, it's so resonant. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, the tap tone is much more uniform and uh, it seems to be very centered. And I do know that the tone of the guitar will change once you start applying finish to them. Uh, this will end up with about 15 to 20 coats of nitrocellulose lacquer. It's already got about seven coats on it right now. So it'll end up with about, you know, 10 or 10 more. And that will actually kind of, uh, it seems like the tone just kind of gets more refined and more centered and the guitar, the body just gets very defined. Uh, but the interesting thing I've noticed about the, the Flying V, and although the, I don't love this guitar, I don't love playing this guitar, and at my age, I probably wouldn't want to be seen on stage playing one, but I, I don't know, maybe I would, but it, I, I'm, a, I'm a jazz guy, I'm a big body guitar guy, but and I'm not a big guy, so I look a little bit funny with this guitar on. But I love building them. They're so fun to build. They're, it's like a happy guitar, and it's just you know, it just you can, who who can't get excited about seeing something like that? And it, it's it's crazy. It's so crazy. It's cool, you know. But nonetheless, uh, and I almost digressed there. What was I talking about? Uh, just the Delmar drum wrap, and this, I, and I lost my train of thought. But for the most part, just I like building this guitar. It's fun. And, I, and I'll just stop talking because I don't want to uh, digress because I did lose my train of thought. I was going somewhere and, uh, and I lost it. So, but we got a, we got a wild, crazy guitar there and uh, it's, it's covered in drum wrap. I know I was talking about it's a more uniform tone now, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, I already mentioned that this was a 1 and 11 sixteenths, so... If you go thicker, it's probably going to be brighter. If you go thinner, it's probably going to get darker. And I'm just going to stop talking about that. No, I do have to talk about this. This is probably one of the main reasons I did the video. Let's say you started out at one and three quarter or one and seven eighths or something kind of crazy. Uh, and uh, I think if you're watching this video, you know that certain woods, if you run them through a planer, everything will be going great right up to the point where you get horrific tear out. And uh, I so, I'm so terrified of planing mahogany because just that, everything will be going great. And then all of a sudden I'll just get this horrific chatter that uh, you'll, you'll, you'll lose it. I mean, it's game over. You'll, you'll get a, a deep gouge out of the, out of the wood. So, so where am I going with this and why am I bringing this up? I think I paid 15 bucks for this off of eBay. Uh, this is a four blade surfacing bit. And let's say that you were sitting there looking at this guitar and, and you're just sick because you, you just know it's too thick. And let's say, or, or let's say you damaged it. For whatever reason, you're wanting to thin it up. Uh, one good way to go about this, make certain that your drill press table is perfectly level, perfectly true. Chuck this up in a drill press as long as you can run it at about 3,400 RPMs. Do not wear gloves. You ought to know that if you're working with tools like this, because if by chance the glove caught that, this thing could really pull you into it. I'm going to stop because I don't want the liability. But if you don't know what you're doing, just delete this part of the video. If you do know what you're doing, run this on your drill press at about 3,500 RPMs. Make sure you got your table uh, nice and true. And, and, and the, obviously the drill press will be fixed, but uh, just start uh, taking off material and then move it. And you're just pushing it through by hand. And whenever your finger starts getting close, just get away from it, you know? Just make certain that you're always thinking about your job. But this is a great, uh, this is a great tool by which you can, uh, man, you could, well, you could cut this thing in half in a, just a matter of moments. And you don't want to make aggressive passes. Just come in and take off about a sixteenth of an inch with each pass. So in other words, if you wanted to remove an eighth, man, you're going to be able to pull that off within two passes and then come in with your uh, 
believe it or not, I come in with a belt sander. I'll come in and I'll take a pencil and just mark it up real heavily. And I'll take my belt sander and just go boom, boom, boom. And then my orbital sander, which is a, no, did I say orbital or oscillating? Uh, or yeah, orbital sander, high speed orbital sander, like what a body body guy would use for doing uh, like car work, repairing cars, and then buzz across that in just a matter of seconds, and you got a perfectly level top. The whole idea about the flying V, it is bar none critical that you don't let this wave. Uh, in all actuality, the flying V actually is probably a very difficult build. Because if you got a curvy bodied guitar, like your traditional Les Paul, Telly, Strat, etc., cetera, uh, they'll hide a multitude of sins. But when you got this right here, uh, and if you got some wave in there or some craziness, uh, it's going to reveal itself. So I learned, I learned the, I learned to realize, uh, I learned to really respect the flying V and especially if it is a hand built flying V. Because I'm not going to be arrogant and say, you know, I'm the, you know, I know exactly what I'm doing. Because I've made a lot of mistakes where I over sanded areas like this in the in the middle, and then you got one or two solutions: either live with it or lose, you know, a sixteenth of an inch off of your shoulder in order to clean it up. Hence the reason I have the uh, the the template that I trust. So. Okay. All right. So a lot of general conversation there. Let me check the time. 21 minutes. Uh, let me, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to load this baby up. Uh, I'm going to talk about this briefly. Uh, now that's just your, your mortise. I did elect to go ahead and cut it off and do the traditional uh, 18th fret join because I am going to build the custom neck for this one. This is going to be a finished guitar just like the last one. Okay, nothing new there, but a few more coats of, of lacquer. So uh, I did use the Stuart McDonald template. Took about, I don't know, 20 minutes to route that initial out. And it'll get routed. Just It's it's flat right now, but it will get pitched. I'm going to start out pitching this one at, at a little bit over one degree. I'm going to pitch this one a little bit lower. I'm going to run this one pretty, pretty low profile. So let me, let me pause. I'm going to load it up, and then we're going to talk about... Uh, you know, using your finished items to transition into uh, doing the machine work and uh, finishing the guitar. Uh, let me pick back up where I left off briefly. Uh, I had this on, on the table for a reason, and this is probably one of the most important tools when you're, when you're getting ready to do your channel work. If for some reason you forgot to do this and you built your neck and you glued your neck in and you forgot to uh, cut that channel right there, uh, one solution would be to come over here and find where the uh, uh, strap location is and it works quite well. Just drill straight through and just make certain that you are at whatever height it is that you will. You'll have to go in on the center and then come in and then after you cut that, channel then you'll have to uh, dowel epoxy in a dowel rod just like we did over here and then uh, clean it up and there'll be a, a hole right here for the uh, pickup wire to channel through into that cavity and then uh, you'll you'll cut that hole that's a substantially bigger hole because sometimes in case I forget sometimes you have some um, uh, just, you know, cowboy engineering here where you had to do some repair and you got a lot more, uh, you have more need for more space for the wiring to go through there. But uh, I like this right here. This works really well, has always worked well for me, whether it's a Tele, a Strat, or a V or anything. And then um, that is, I, I, it's probably 3 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, and you'd be surprised. You would think an eighth inch is uh, big enough, but an eighth inch drill bit is not. It needs to be a little bit bigger. Uh, but what I do is uh, after I drill that, I go ahead and put this cutter head on there. Okay. And then I do, I just do a little bit of cleanup because if you do just a regular drill bit, it, sometimes it kind of reveals a little bit of tear out. And that's a nice way of kind of finishing it up. But where it is very important is back here. 
where I went in on that location right there and connected the control cavity to the bottom of that pocket. Once I was in there, uh, obviously it's just a regular hole. I wanted to take my cutter and cut a little bit of a, of a, of a clean uh, bevel. I don't know if that's showing. Okay, and I did a, a bevel there as well, just to make sure that the, there's plenty of room for the wiring. Because uh, once you see where I have this loaded up, you'll see what I'm talking about, about making certain that there's room for the wiring to go through. So let me pause. Okay, should be able to finish the video here in just a few minutes. Um, won't really, nothing to really talk about other than just take a visual. This is kind of to give you an idea of what the guitar would look like, you know, if you went with a Seymour Duncan uh, uncovered uh, with the cream tip. Uh, let's see if I can do this without falling apart. The control cavity begins to start filling up. So you can see the importance of uh, flaring right there so it's easy to get that wire in right there. That would be your uh, output jack. Now there is sufficient room in there to run one more wire through if you want to run your guitar in stereo. I uh, won't go into that in this video, but nonetheless there's nothing wrong with having things close as long as you give room for movement. Now you wouldn't be able to sol solder that to that because you wouldn't be able to service it. That wire will have to ground somewhere else and give you room to, to work on the guitar. Okay, and uh, one thing I, I'll just go ahead and do is just, there's no sense in showing the back. Well, I can't because of that cover, but you can make little covers like this that'll press down in there so that you can start painting your white, your primers, or your black if you were deciding to leave all that clear because I would love to see all of that raw wood so that I can kind of see the history of the, the wood as, as in its entirety as well as the guitar itself. So the next thing would be, uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to leave this body uh, undrilled back here because, see, that would be the studs that would have to be drilled back at this location here for a traditional, if you were to do the traditional tail, just like I did the last guitar. But with this guitar, I'm going to leave it, uh, I don't have a bridge, so just humor me and imagine that's a bridge. Or someone might elect to go with a wrap around uh, a bridge, then I can install that bridge, okay? Or if they want the traditional ABR1 bridge, in other words, a compensated wrap around tail of some sort, like a Leo Quan badass. Or if you want the traditional ABR1 type bridge and then the hard tail, just like I did on Sam's guitar, the last Red Sparkle, then, then I'll come in and drill these and install this do the ground wire, do the ground wire behind the one on the right, go into the cavity and all that will be taken care of. Or, you know, uh, and then if you ele ever elected to go with the Bixby B5 in the future, well then I've already installed the anchors, okay? But once this auction closes, the guy that, or the girl that wins it might say, ooh, don't touch it, but I want a Floyd Rose. And they may have a Floyd Rose that they want to provide. And and to me, that would be so exciting. If you've got an old vintage uh, OFR and uh, it's chrome, it's black, it's gold, I don't care if, if it's uh, hot pink, uh, send it to me, man, I'll put that baby on there for no charge. I don't, I'm not gonna charge anybody anything to machine for the Floyd Rose, okay? So uh, if you elected to go with the Floyd Rose, then uh, I thought they had a little block of wood Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, the camera's still rolling. Uh, the Floyd. Uh, again, I guess where I'm going with this, uh, this guitar, if there's ever been an incredible opportunity to do a Floyd Rose, uh, buddy, this, this sure is the time to do it. Because <laughs> this guitar would be screaming cool with the Floyd. Uh, just because of, you know, all the sparkle. Sorry about the phone. I know that's kind of noisy, but it, it works well for me.
Very sexy guitar. Uh, I don't know if this would work, but uh, you might elect to go with the gold. And who knows where that went. This is the amber, the real dark amber. And actually it looks really good. It really does look good. Uh, so go that route, but I'm not gonna end the video with that on there because uh, that's not really my favorite choice. I think if you were gonna go with a Floyd Rose, you would want to go with, uh, I just, I wallowed these out so they'd be easy for doing uh, mock-ups. But uh, again, I think if you've learned anything, when you're building a custom guitar, especially if you're building a guitar for the first time, uh, buy all your items that you would need to lay it out and uh, not only will it make your job so much easier, it'll make it so fun, so much more enjoyable. You'll have so much fun, you know, laying out all these different configurations. And if you can't afford to, uh, to, to buy all of those items, well, paper is, is pretty much free. I think we all know that. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, if you were considering doing P90s, well, then just take some real thick paper and cut out some P90s and, uh, and paint them black. Or if you wanted to do like EMG, and Steve had mentioned uh, where he did an active uh, flying V for a guy and he did the 9-volt battery in there, well, then you just, you know, make, you know, make your little paper templates to work, to work by and, and lay things out and ask yourself, hey, do I like the idea of the, you know, uncovered pickup? Or do I like the idea of like the EMG or the P90? Uh, saves a lot of money by doing it on paper. I know that for a fact. And then uh, I'll to give you an idea of, of what this guitar, let's see if I can hold that in place. Oh, forgot about that not being machined in place. <laughs> anyway, that'll give you an idea what it would look like with like the EMG. That'd be a little bit closer in. That'd actually be much closer in. The Floyd is very close to the bridge pickup. So, all right, so a long video there. I'll be surprised if it hasn't cut my audio off by now. But in the event it did not, I appreciate you guys uh, checking in the video, and I will see you in the next video. All right, thanks, guys.